Hi and welcome to my presentation called Physiologically Based Multi-Level and Multi-Organ Digital Twins Enter Healthcare. And uh, my name is Gunnar Sedersund and this is what I normally look like when I give a lecture and here you see my research group. So um, we have been work working for 20 years with doing mathematical modeling together with many many collaborators for all of the main organs in the human body, publishing papers and now also interconnecting them into a general mathematical model for the physiology of the human body, which becomes a digital twin by adding patient-specific data. And uh, this is now entering end usage uh, in the clinic, in drug development, uh, in part via our spin-off company called Sund. And here you see a little digital twin of a cedar tree. And uh, the, the name of the spin-off company is called Sund, which uh, means healthy, but it also means to do things in a sound way. And we want to inspire people to live a sound life. And um, uh, Cedar Tree here is uh, the first part of my last name. So this is a little symbolic digital twin of my last name, you could say. So how do we do this? Well. We take from our collaborators mechanistic hypothesis and experimental data, convert the hypothesis, the ideas of how the system work, to ordinary differential equations, which we fit to data. And if we fail to get a good agreement, we reject the hypothesis. And otherwise, we use simulations with uncertainty to do predictions that help us design new experiments with which to further test and validate the model which then is integrated into the big picture and which then is used for end usage simulation, like drug simulations, where we can simulate healthy responses, type 2 diabetes responses, and also improvements. And in this way, we can go from mechanistic insights to making a difference in healthcare much faster. So we started by connecting a, a, a a model for how insulin binds to the insulin receptor, which is part of the overall intracellular insulin signaling cascade, which we also uh, found out how it dysfunctions in type 2 diabetes. Comparing here, as you see, and in all uh, comparisons, the dots are always data, and the lines are always simulations. And here, Red means diabetes and blue means uh, that the cells come from healthy controls that don't have diabetes. So let's just say one of those intracellular responses. See that this is a part of an organ model uh, which describes meal responses, which already is approved by the Food and Drug Administration and um, um, uh, which in turn is a part of long term model for weight changes. So here you see the logotype of our group, which shows that these are mechanistic models. We are not black box models. We can look inside them. We can see the mechanisms. And we also see this prediction with uncertainty all the time. So the areas here are the uh, predictions with uncertainty. So moving to personalization. Here we have our first digital twin, uh, fat deposit, muscle deposits and glucose responses. And now we are collecting all sorts of these time series responses in, in response to meals and exercise and other types of interventions. And uh, again, comparing data and simulations. And even for one person, we always subdivide the data so that we train it here to the breakfast uh, blood sugar response. And then we see, can we correctly predict what happens then in the, in the lunch response. If we can, we do predictions with uncertainty for a similar application, which is fulfilling then the FDA criteria, and in the same way for all sorts of other things, heart and blood flow and stress responses, brain activity, exercise, and so on. And the key ideas for using this is the clinic, is to use this type of simulations to have better medical pedagogics, to explain better what happens to a patient and thereby to uh, improve compliance and prevention, so better following treatments. So those are the short-term things we will, which we'll try in the clinic now uh, at the end of the year, actually. And, uh, and uh, for long-term goal is to also use this for personalized diagnosis and treatments. So we launched this at Almedalen in 2019, and since then we've been invited to give keynote presentations at NIH, at ETH Warden, and Swedish Parliament. 
other places. So to make this a little bit more concrete, here is uh, a person doing uh, exercise, which can be, uh, for instance, to improve nuffel, the liver fat, which is connected to obesity, diet, dyslipidemia, so what you eat. Uh, but, and it's also a risk factor, not only for liver complications, but for stroke and uh, all sorts of other things. So this particular uh, project is done in collaboration with the uh, clinician Matthias Ekstedt. And if you get a stroke or, or a COVID-19 complication, for instance, you end up in the ICU. Uh, and, and then you also, after these type of complications, you want to do exercise to, um, uh, to rehabilitate yourself. And the core idea is that by simulating different scenarios, we can show how, for instance, the liver fat is getting worse or better depending on the person's diet or exercise. So we can tell stories. And the motivation for this is uh, something that we will use as our, our first implementation, clinical implementation. It's the health conversation. It's something that started up in Westerbotten and it's being implemented more and more in, in also here in, in Region Östergötland. And it's a one hour conversation which is offered to, to people who turn 40 and 50 here in Östergötland. Uh, so once every 10 years, twice in your life. And, and they already shown that this lowers the mortality, overall mortality, with 30%. And we hope to magnify this by explaining even better and having even more motivations to live even more healthy lives. And uh, the underlying model simulations for these type of stories is, is for instance, here. So here you see simulations and data again in comparison. Uh, for liver fat in response to a diet change. So you see it goes from 16% down to 11%. And uh, after they have this conversation, we will also offer them to bring it home, this digital twin, and to combine it with wearable sensors to update all the time their understanding of themselves and, and, uh, and, and what happens and how what they do make a difference. And then at home they can they can do this type of simulation so they can simulate this diet so here 300 hour lchf diet low carbohydrate high fat diet you can look at yourself choose different uh, cross sections different organs that you can lift out so so here you see three organs uh, but you can also look at uh, fat deposits and muscle deposits as we've shown before and now by clicking at the liver uh, you can see what is in the models inside the liver and this is now a microscopy image. And you see these white circles. They are um, lipid droplets, fat droplets. So here you see the simulation go down, but then maybe even better for telling a story is to show this is your microscopy image as it probably looks before. And this is what it looks after uh, as, the, as the model believes. Uh, so, uh, so see, you, you saw that these white droplets, the lipid droplets have disappeared. So what about exercise? So what is happening here? Well, here is an AI technology uh, which takes the movement of a professional dancer, detects the pose and then uses a GAN technology to predict it, to move, make it look like she's dancing. So this is... Uh, uh, in a way, a digital twin uh, made to move. And we implemented this technology. So here you see my student taking a walk and here you see an artificially generated walk by a digital twin. And what we're working on now is a biomechanics version of this where you simulate uh, forces. And, uh, and the benefit of this, we hope, is that you can get even nicer images in the end and connection to medical benefits. So you can simulate forces at the same time and also you can Again, click on the blood and see cortisol levels or fat acid levels uh, uh, as they change uh, in response to here a 100 minute light dance session or light exercise session. So apart from that, we also work together with AstraZeneca to uh, use not only computer models, but physical models. So this is an organ on a chip or organs on a chip. So here we have a little liver and a little pancreas, which are human cells and uh, which in principle uh, can be taken from a specific person. And then you see here again that our model, the lines can describe data, which are the simulations for this little mini human. Uh, and then we can translate this by scaling in the computer to the human proportions. 
and translate from the very long meal responses that you see on the chip to the four, normal four-hour meal responses that you see in the, in the humans. So the summary and the long-term vision here that we are working towards is to have something that starts at, already at birth, if you want, donate some cells and donate some data to the digital twin and to the organ on the chip. Add new cells when needed and do physical experiments on your little mini you, which you then translate using our models to, uh, to uh, your digital twin. You add new data from smart sensors or healthcare records and use it throughout your patient journey. So wherever you go, if you go to the gym or you go to the doctor or, or you go to a concert for that matter, or you want to use it for testing drugs, uh, you can always use your digital twin. So to make a, a more concrete point of this, uh, where we blur the line between healthcare and everyday life. So this is a, a project where I, as a concert piece, pianist, analyze um, music pieces and then collaborate here with a professional dancer, Julia Bengtsson, who before the pandemic, she, 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 she performed as a soloist with her, whole, her own uh, choreography in Carnegie Hall, which is maybe the biggest stage in the world. And we are together using this abstract representation to uh, develop a joint choreography, which also involves digital twins, which where audience members and patients will be included in the choreography. So they can then see the benefits of dancing live as they are watching this cultural experience, which also will be available in the, in the augmented reality solution, so you can view it in a safe distance. So again, uh, my research group, I want to thank them. They are uh, working together and working together with many, many different collaborator partners and lots of funding as well that makes this possible. So now time for questions.